Welcome back to the Authentic Christian Podcast. I'm Aaron, this is Tucker, this is Scott, and today we're going to talk about Jesus and politics. All right, so welcome back to the Authentic Christian. Today we're talking about Jesus and politics, where we tell you who to vote for. No, I'm kidding. A joke. <laughs> no, you're probably thinking, oh boy, no. Oh boy. What we're going to do on today's episode is we're going to talk about, number one, when we talk about Jesus, okay, Jesus is God, okay, so if we're going to get any sort of advice on how to look at the government, how to treat the government, how to treat people that disagree with us about things like that, we're going to look to Jesus, right? Obviously, he's the one that created this universe. Mm -hmm. And we said, Jesus makes the rules. So if you're watching and you hear this passage and you're like, well, I don't like that passage. I don't like what it tells me to do. And I don't want to respect my government. Well, when you speak your own universe in existence, <laughs> you can make your own rules for it. That's so Jesus nice. is the one who gives us the rules to live by as Christians. And so we're going to talk about that today. So First of all, we want to talk about, before we get into talking about actual politics, um, we want to talk about the government and its origin. Where, where, blah, where was the origin of the government? Who came up with it? Was it something man came up with, or does God did God come up with it, Scott? Well, God came up with it. Daniel yeah. 2.21 talks about him removing and raising up kings, right? Yeah. So Daniel 2.21, he removes kings and raises up kings. I mean, that's talking about rulers. If you study the book of Daniel... The book of Daniel talks about, repeatedly, governments, kingdoms. Talks about Babylon. Talks mm -hmm. about Medo-Persia. Talks about Greece. And then after that, it gives a fourth kingdom. It doesn't mention by name, but it's historically, obviously, talking about Rome. He talks about the period between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Antiochus Epiphanes. He, all these different Seleucid, all these different governments. God talks about them, and he talks about they're going to come into power. They're going to be taken away. Yeah. I mean, so God, as Daniel 2.21 says, he removes kings and raises up kings. I mean. Yeah, what about Daniel 4.17? The most high rules in the kingdoms of men, gives it to wh whomever he will, and sets it over the lowest of men. Yeah. Who rules in the kingdoms of men? The most high. Yeah. yeah. That's God. God gives it to whoever he wants. Yeah. He, he, can, he yeah. made sure that Nebuchadnezzar understood that right. What happened to Nebuchadnezzar? Yeah. He was ruling, and then basically he got prideful, and God basically, it's called boanthropy, if you look it up in a psychological textbook where he basically was given the mind of a beast. He thought he was like a cow. He was eating grass. Yeah. Wow. And it was God humbled him until he about that. came like, to himself. Yeah. One of the most powerful kings of the era. Yeah. And uh, he's out eating grass <laughs> in the field. That's yeah. crazy. I th these, are, these are not, sometimes we look at like a king in the Bible. That's not like today. Like we have a president and he rules over America with the help of other governments, right? That's not how it was in these ancient kingdoms. Nebuchadnezzar, Babylon, he does whatever he wants. He ro rules the then known world. Yeah, he's not like over a particular branch with a limited little no. sandbox that he no. can operate in. He's he's the power. Yeah. Whatever he says. Yeah. He makes the laws. Yeah. He executes the laws and uh he can be a judge over the laws if he wants to as well. Yeah. Like here, you know, the president have, has an executive order or whatever and I'm not experts on this, but then you'll have well some Supreme Court may say, Oh, no, you can't do that or whatever. No, not back then. Back yeah. then, Nebuchadnezzar was the Supreme Court. He was the he president. He was Congress. He was, he was Congress. The, yeah. He was Senate. He yeah. was everything. Yeah. He does whatever he wants. And so you have these kingdoms, and God says he raises them up, mm -hmm. whoever God wants to be over them. Now, we may not understand that sometimes because we look at nations and we're like, well, why would, why would God allow that guy to rule a kingdom? Yeah. Well, sometimes kingdoms are put in power and used as tools to destroy other more sinful nations. I mean, you have, like, I think of the Old Testament prophet Habakkuk, where Habakkuk, this is a summary of the book, but Habakkuk looks around at Israel, and he says, like, man, we're so sinful. Like, God, when are you going to punish us? And God answers and says, oh, I am. I'm, I'm coming, and I'm bringing Babylon, or Assyria, maybe. And he says, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, Lord. <laughs> those guys, no, 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 not those guys. Like, we're not that bad. And God's like, look, you just said you were sinful. He says, I'm going to punish you with this nation, and then later, they'll get theirs. But for right now, I'm using this evil nation to take care of punishing other evil. So God can use an evil nation to punish others. We might not understand that, but we've never created a universe and had to providentially work nations and kingdoms. So we should just trust that God knows what he's doing. You yeah, know? yeah, absolutely. So what should our, we know that God establishes government. What should our view be towards the government? Does the Bible talk about that at all? Yeah, it talks about it in several places, um, especially over the New Testament, where my mind goes. Be like, starting off Romans thirteen would be a good one, right? That's Romans thirteen is a great section. 
sometimes we'll have a verse and we're like quote that verse, but this is a good section. Uh, we got time so far. I wouldn't mind sort of reading through it. Sure, you want me to read it? Uh, yeah, Scott, you go ahead and read it. Or <clears throat> yeah, start. I mean, verse. Let's start with verse one. Yeah, one through I seven mean, is the section. So go ahead and start in verse one. All right. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Uh, whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. So when you resist the authority, I got the New King James, mm-hmm. resist the authority of the government, the governing authorities, verse 1, you're resisting the ordinance of God. Yeah. When you because resist the government. They're ordained by God. Yeah. You're resisting God. Mm-hmm. People, we don't think about that a lot, do we? No. We think, well, not this enough. isn't, no, not enough. You're going to think, well, this maybe breaks the law, but it's not a sin. Yeah. Yeah, and there's there's other passages. We'll finish reading this one, but yeah. but this isn't this isn't like a one time he talks about yeah. it. I mean, this is over in Peter. This is over in Titus. I yeah. mean, there, it's it's multiple sections in the New Testament that talk about yeah. this. So, and just before we're going to get there, so don't run ahead of us. Think we don't know about this passage, but we'll get to Acts five twenty nine, yeah. which says we obey God rather than men. We're yeah. going to get to that. Whenever the yeah. government tells you to do something that is sinful, you don't do it. But we'll get to that. So let's stay in Romans thirteen. Uh, I guess verse three maybe is where you. Yeah. Stop. Okay. Uh, for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Okay. So sometimes different translations are harder to understand than others. Basically, a summary of this is what he's saying is he's saying, look, the rulers are supposed to be people that punish evil. So mm-hmm. if you do good, a majority of the time, right, you're going to say, well, there's there's examples in history where people did the right thing and they were punished for it. That's true. But a majority of the time, it's like a book of Proverbs, a book of principles. When you do the right thing, mm-hmm. you normally don't have problems with the government. Whenever you commit crimes, then you're going to get arrested. And the Bible here says that the government has the right from God to bear the sword, right? That's capital punishment. The mm-hmm. government has the right from God, that for certain crimes, like, I mean, the Old Testament, any man who's basically sheds blood, his yeah. blood will be shed. We're not going to yeah. dive into that too much on this episode, maybe a different one. But the government has the right to bear the sword given to them by God. Yeah, they've got the authority to enforce the laws. That's right. Some case that mean, In some cases, that means that uh, they may need to put someone to death for something they've done. Sure. But uh, even even more general than that, they, they have the ability Inflict to punishment. force their will right. to be done. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things that kind of sparked this episode is like, you know, you look in the world today, especially on social media, it's such a huge thing right now. And um, Christians or maybe non-Christians like, well, you know, we've seen stuff on um, Facebook or something be like, we need to assassinate this person who's a politician or, you know, in that yeah. position. And, you know, as Christians, like, I'm glad we're diving into this because it's like, yeah. should we treat them as people or just some figure and like just slander their name or should we have to respect them? So I'm glad that we're diving yeah deep into this. You're so. exactly right. Yeah. I mean, for instance, I think about the, all the, the stuff that's going against the police right now. I mean, literally the Bible says, and we're about to get to verse six. Uh, let me read verses five and six. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you pay taxes. For they, speaking of the government, are what? God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. I know in verse four, God's minister, I think in verse six, that word minister is the word diakonos, the Greek word where we get the word deacon, which just means servant, right? It was this idea of stirring up dust, right? They were so busy serving. Government officials are God's servants. Now, sometimes they might not act like it. I mean, Jesus called Herod a fox, right? Herod yeah. mm-hmm. was in a position of power, but maybe wasn't a moral man. Yeah. But like when, when I see a police officer, right? If, if I get pulled over for like an expired registration, I'm not going to be mad at the guy. I'm actually... It might, as contrary as I might thank him and say, Hey, do you know you're God's minister? You're God's servant. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that a lot of people realize that, you know? Maybe like, well, you thank a, you. Maybe you can get a study out of that somehow. Well, right. that's kind of the goal. Yeah. If I, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. know, hey, did you thank you for my ticket? Did, did you, you know, know that you're a minister of God's servant, Romans 13, 6? <laughs> and maybe yeah. he'll say, Really? No, thank you. would like to have a Bible study with me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. We need to respect the, the people that God puts in. You, know, you might not understand why God put a, ru- a ruler in power. You may say, Well, I can't understand why God, well, there's a lot of things that God does that we don't mm-hmm. understand. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't change what Scripture says. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, what verse did I... I you stopped at verse off. 6. You yeah. want to read 7? Uh, Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, 
fear to whom fear and honor to whom honor. And tribute, another way to translate that is taxes. Yeah. So taxes to whom taxes are due. Wait a minute. You're telling me I have to pay taxes? You're telling me I have to pay taxes, Tucker? Oh, man. Man, it seems like Jesus said something about that somewhere. Even you know, Mississippi taxes? That's right. Even, even, Mississippi. even federal and state and sales <laughs> tax. In, in Luke 23, when the Pharisees took Jesus before Pilate, and they were trying to get him killed, right? They told Pilate. Now, Pilate is the, the governor over mm-hmm. Judea for the Roman Empire, right? Verse 2, Luke 23. They began to accuse him, accuse Jesus, saying, we found this mellow, per- mellow, this fellow, <laughs> perverting the nation and forbidding to pay taxes to Caesar, okay? Well, that was a lie. What did Jesus just say? What, what, were you in Luke, Tucker? Yeah. Read Luke, I think, 20, 25. 20, 20 okay. Luke 20, 25. This is what Jesus said. Luke 20, 25. These pages are so thin. All right, I'll read it. <laughs> Luke twenty twenty five. He said to them, "Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, but to God the things that are God." I mean, what is Jesus saying? You pay taxes to who? To Caesar. Yeah, the yeah. government, the ruler. Yeah. So Jesus said it. That should settle it, right? They're his. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. They're his. God says, "Look, God establishes the government. Mm-hmm. You pay taxes. Why? Because the government is supposed to fulfill certain functions. Yeah. One of those is punishing the evildoer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Am I super stoked about paying taxes? Not necessarily, but yeah." You know, they have a purpose. Yeah. God put them in place. Yeah, God put them he in place. He expects us to do it. That's right. Uh, if I'm going to be a faithful child of God, I need to follow him in all things. That's not exactly just the right. things that, that I personally prefer. That's exactly right. So. Yeah, I mean, God established the government and says, hey, you pay pa- taxes to support them. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, God right. set it up. You know, exactly. I'm not going to argue with it. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, what about, you know, Tucker mentioned earlier about our attitude towards the government about how some people say, you know, oh, well, well, should we assassinate them? Go to First Timothy 2. What is First Timothy 2? Read verses uh, 1 through 4 if you have it, Tucker. All right. Therefore, I exhort, first of all, that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and all who are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and reverence. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. So in verse 1 and 2, what are we supposed to do for kings and all who are in authority? We're supposed to do what? Pray for them. Pray for them. Supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks. You go through and look at those four different types. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to say thank you. You're supposed to pray for them to be successful. You're supposed to pray for God to provide for them. You're supposed to be thankful for them. That's not just like one word. That's four different words that deal with four different types of prayers. So, yeah, you're not supposed to assassinate your leaders. You're supposed to do what? Love them. Pray for them. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the president. All who are in what? All authority, uh, authority. Yeah, that's in our case the president, the Senate, the Congress, that's the Supreme Court, that's mm-hmm. the unelected officials, like the bureaucrats, like the head of the FBI. That's for like the head of whatever, whatever yeah. organization you want to talk about. Yeah, Department of Defense, Homeland Security, the IRS. Yeah, I mean we're just yeah. talking about taxes. Pray yeah. for them. Anyone that's in authority. Yeah, down to your city council. Yeah, you know, I mean, like everyone that's in authority, you're supposed to pray for them. Why? The police chief. Yeah, officers, yeah absolutely. Everybody. You're supposed to pray yeah. for them. I mean, you may say, yeah, well, that's my enemy. What did Jesus say about that? Yeah. Love yeah. them. Yeah. Love them and Bless do what? Them. Bless them yeah. that persecute you. Yeah. Pray for your enemies. Yeah. yeah. Right? To hate them would literally be it would to go against Jesus, to hate your yeah. politicians. And that's really, it's funny, when, you submit, when you're submitting to government, a lot of the things maybe you don't like, it's not submission unless you don't really like it. You know? Like if somebody, yeah. if, 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 the, if the government tells me to do this and I'm like, well, I don't like that. Well, that's not submitting. Yeah. Submitting now, not, is when you do it whether you like it or not. That's exactly right. Yeah. That's so and I, and in submitting to the government, I'm submitting to Jesus. Unless, now, of course, let's let's just go ahead and jump there. Let's go to Acts 5:29 because I know there's going to be some people watching that, you know, we're in America and they the government can't tell me what to do. Well, Jesus instituted the government, God instituted the government, but there are situations if the government requests or tells you or commands you to do something that is against God's word. How do you respond? Acts 5.29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. That's right. So what does that mean? We got the exception. The exception is you ask yourself, will doing what the government tells me to do cause me to sin, Mm -hmm. to go against and break God's law? Mm -hmm. Uh, Not my personal judgment, not my personal opinions, not my personal thoughts or feelings, but is it going to cause me to actually sin and do something opposite or fail to do something that God has instructed me to do. Yeah. Maybe that's gathering together on the first day of the week and worshiping. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't 
say, well, the government said I can't do it, therefore I can't do it. No. Right? I mean, you see a lot of our brethren in places like, like China and other places around the world yeah. where they still gather together even though they're not allowed to do it. Why? Yeah. Because the Christians and their number one allegiance is to God yeah. and to the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, the, the church, the body, right? I have a friend who, um, who was a missionary in China, and he told me this story once about how, I think it was his dad maybe. He was a missionary, his dad was. But they were meeting, and you know the, the Chinese government will send officials in secretly to yeah. like the assemblies to try to take notes on who is actually wow. you know they just come in and they think Scary. they're a visitor yeah and or they might even be a member you don't know but they work for the government well and so the american missionary found out that there was one of the government officials who was at the assembly and the american missionary uh, asked the leaders he's like hey do we need to like do we need to try to move the assembly or find out who this is and they they were like no and he was like yeah but like what if what if they arrest you? And all the leaders of that Chinese church laughed. And they said, brother, we've all been to prison already for this. They'd all already been to prison wow. for being a Christian. They weren't concerned. They thought it was funny. They were like, look, if we go to prison, I mean, that's, that's if in America, they, the government comes out one day and says, hey, you guys can no longer worship on Sunday. I'm going to say, well, you know, you don't have to handcuff me. I'll walk with you. But yeah. we're going to do what the, the, the Bible says to do. I mean. They kind of sound like the Christians yeah. in the New Testament. They got beat up and then they rejoiced. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's like <laughs> you get whipped and you like, we talked about the last episode. They're rejoicing because they were suffering for the name of Christ. They were like, you know, Jesus suffered. Now I suffer. What a privilege to suffer like Jesus did. Yeah. And later on, they'd be given the chance to recant their Christianity yeah. and go and worship in the temple or whatever the case may be. Not, not, not the Jewish temple, but the no, pagan the Roman, temples. Yeah. Or uh, give worship to. Uh, was it Nero? Some of the other yeah, Dominus Caesars, et Deus. They lo, right. Caesar is Lord and God. That's yeah. what Revelation talks a lot about. A lot of people think Revelation is right. written to people talking about all this. It's talking about in the first century, Rome was basically saying to people, either you worship, you offer a pinch of incense on the the altar to Caesar and worship Caesar as God, or we're going to put you to death, or we right. won't give you a business license, so you can't buy and sell. Revelation thirteen. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an extreme example. Yeah. Um, but that's a good example in showing that when that happens, uh, yeah. the faithful Christians said no, and yeah. what you get yeah. Revelation two ten out of that, right? Yeah. You yeah. get that idea of being faithful even unto death. Yeah. So there's a case to not obey the government, but only when it's going to cause you to sin. Yeah. yeah. So you obey the government as much as you can until the government asks you to do something that is sinful and against God's word, and then you say we got to obey God rather than men. That's right. I mean, sometimes we think you know, oh, oh well, we don't like our leaders here in America. First Peter chapter two, who's got, can someone look up first Peter two? Cause I have, I have a, a quote. It, yeah, I can get it real quick. Yeah. Go to first Peter chapter two. And, um, I want to read verse 17. All right. First Peter chapter two and verse 17. Honor all people. Love the brother here. Brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Honor the king. Okay. First Peter time of his writing. Who's the king? Is it, would have been starts with an N, N and yeah. ends in Eero. <laughs> yeah. Hero. Starts with an N and rhymes with hero. The most Nero. famous persecutor. Okay, Nero. The emperor Nero is ruling Rome. So Peter says, honor the king. Okay, I want to read you a quote. This is not from a Christian. This is from a man uh, named Tacitus. He's a, a Roman historian, and he has uh, a lot of writings, but Annals is this one. I want to read you it's a fairly long quote. Therefore, to stop the rumor that he had set Rome on fire. There was a, ro a rumor, Rome catches fire, and is, hey, did Nero start it? He blames the Christians. Okay. So Nero falsely charged with guilt and punished with the most fearful tortures the persons commonly called Christians who were generally hated for their enormities. So honor the king. What king? Does he have to be only godly? No, this is Nero. This is what he did, okay? Christus, the founder, okay, uh, the most fearful tortures of the persons commonly called Christians who were generally hated for their enormities. Christus, the founder of that name, was put to death as a criminal by Pontius Pilate the procurator, that means governor of Judea, in the reign of Tiberius. Okay, he's talking about Jesus. That's mm -hmm. interesting. That's a non-biblical account saying exactly what the Bible said, corroborates it. Okay. Repressed for a long time, broke out yet again, not only in Judea, but where the mischief originated, and throughout the city of Rome also. So he's saying these Christians were punished by Nero. Here's how they were punished. This is from a Roman historian, non-Christian. In their very deaths, they were made the subjects of sport, for they were covered with the hides of wild beasts, they were worried to death by dogs. That doesn't mean like worried as in, oh, I'm so worried. Okay, it's talking about killing them, tearing them apart. Or nailed to crosses. Or they were set fire to. And when the day waned, they were burned to serve for the evening lights. 
Christians were burned as torches in Nero's gardens in the first century. A Roman historian's writing this. Not some Christian saying, woe is us. It's a Roman historian. That's the kind of king that they had in the first century. And first that Peter had to honor. that they had to honor. Yeah. Man. I mean, can you imagine those first century Christians if they like, you know, let's say that there's someone out there that doesn't like any of our current or last presidents, right? We have one current, obviously, but past presidents, you don't like them. Yeah. Do you know what a first century Christian would think? <laughs> I mean, you guys got a, it's a cakewalk for you. Yeah. Yeah. That that's guy's a, a puppy dog compared a, to Nero. That's a good takeaway. I mean, basically, for mm-hmm. us today in, in the United States, it doesn't really matter how you feel about our current leadership, whether that's the current president, whether it's the current leaders in Congress mm-hmm. or Supreme Court or whatever. It doesn't matter how you feel about the last ones. Mm-hmm. No matter which side you're on in American politics, as a Christian, yeah. you're to honor them, be respectful towards them, be respectful, not just when you see them face to face, but in your conversation privately and among others in the church and yeah. the community, yeah, you can disagree with policy and you can explain yourself and reason, but that's that doesn't give you license to uh, to slander that's right. or call nasty names no. or, or 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 try to talk about their intent and ascribe evil necessarily yeah. where yeah. you can't prove it. Some things they'll come out and they'll admit to something that sure. is evil. They might support something like abortion that is evil yeah. and you can condemn that, but that's different than uh, insulting their intelligence. Or well, bless else. those who curse you. Right. Even if someone curses at you as a Christian, you're supposed to bless them back. You can right. have mature adult conversations with people, but always remember, as Robert said last night in the sermon, his parents used to tell him, remember who you are and whose you are. Yeah. yeah. Remember who you are. You're a Christian. Act like it. That's perfect. Your speech should be like it. And remember whose you are. You're Christ's. Yeah. And so you need to imitate him. First Corinthians 11, 1, Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. We're supposed to look like Christ. Does somebody look at you and say, well, we know they're Christians by their love? Or do they look at you and say, there's no way that God belongs to Jesus? You know? Yeah. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network, or GBN for short. You can hop on the App Store, search Gospel Broadcasting Network, and you can download the app. And there's this show, many other great shows that you can watch or listen to. Start learning more about the Bible and uh, why we're here, what our purpose is. Thanks for listening. Let's look at, obviously, we know in the Bible that Christians are a part of two kingdoms, right? We're a part of the spiritual kingdom. John eighteen thirty six. Jesus told Pilate that his kingdom was not of this what? World. World. My kingdom's not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. He said, I have a spiritual kingdom that he's setting up, right? Which is the church, all right? When the two collide, we talked about this, Acts 5, 29, we obey God rather than men, okay? But what about evaluating political leaders? What is the Bible concerned with? Is the Bible concerned with really economic success, is that what the Bible says? Hey, this guy was a great leader because he made his people rich. I think yeah. it's really concerned about righteousness yeah. and, and, and doing the right thing and preserving justice and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, economics being good, that, that's always a plus. But that's, I mean, we, we have examples in the scriptures of where people could be successful economically in a uh, political sense, um, militarily, but that doesn't necessarily make them great in the eyes of God yeah. or doesn't necessarily make them uh, what you should look for as a Christian if you have that that right to vote like we have here in the United States. Um, that's not your number one priority in, in evaluating if this is somebody I want to support. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What was it we noted? Second Kings 14, Jeroboam the second. Or it yep. seems to show how po- political successful he was. Restored lands, made wars, and then in verse 24, yet he was recognized as doing evil in the sight of God. Yeah. I mean, it says he basically That's like expanded the kingdom of God, and it says he was an evil ruler. You know, it yeah. gives like a very small amount to his like political successes. So he did all that good stuff in a sense, but yet he's still seen in God's eyes as doing evil. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, God's always been concerned with morality in his leaders. Yeah. I mean, you know, you look throughout the Old Testament. Just look at whenever, you know, it's funny, First Samuel 8, God is supposed to be their leader and their king. And then the people are like, give us a king like the nations around us in First Samuel 8. And basically God says, they haven't rejected you to Samuel. They've rejected me. And he says, look, when you have a king, he's going to take yeah. your people. He's going to take your stuff. He's going to do all these things. And yet they still wanted a king. But I mean, Proverbs, a book of principles, talks a lot about those sorts of things. It talks about how righteousness exalts mm-hmm. a nation. But sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs mm-hmm. chapter 14 and verse 34, I think it is. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned, I mean, what are some things that Proverbs also talks about 
maybe some moral things that God loves and things that God hates. Life is sacred. Yeah. We're made in the image of God. Yeah. Um, one thought I had real quick is just we have to keep in mind, of, like as Christians, how big our influence is. Yeah. And if we share something on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere and it's like completely humiliating a politician or something, we could lose or really hurt our influence. Yeah. We, quickly. We've got to be that salt and that light. Yeah. 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 I mean, Proverbs 6 talks about things that God loves and things that God hates. Um, so when you're looking at who is a moral leader, I mean, I'm just going to be, I, I don't, we don't want to get into this too much, but this is who I, I personally am going to think about my leaders, morality. I'm going to respect them all. I'm going to pray for them all. But I want moral leaders. Yeah. Yeah. For, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16. These things the Lord hates, seven are abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood. In this country, we're, we're going to do definitely another episode on abortion. I was reading the abortion statistics and how many abortions have been since the 70s, Roe versus Wade. And when I read up, I think it was like maybe, I don't remember how many million it was, but it was the same population as if it was like Australia and Canada. Mm -hmm. Like, can you imagine if right now, Australia and Canada, every person that lived in there was just gone. Mm -hmm. That was like the statistic for abortion. That just blew my mind. That's here. Yeah. That's that's here. in the U.S. Yeah, in the U.S. We're a small sliver of what's going on in the world. Yeah, it's... um. It's mind-blowing when you yeah. when you really try to put that yeah. into a, a real perspective, isn't it? Yeah, it's heartbreaking, too. And yeah. I mean, if a person's had an abortion, they can be forgiven of that. I know yeah. I know lots oh, of people yeah. that have had abortions in the past. They learned that it was wrong. They felt awful about it. They repented. They were baptized. They had their sins washed away by the blood of Jesus. And they've been forgiven of that, yeah. you know? That's right. Yeah, and that's what the power of the blood of Christ is, is it can forgive you from anything. Just like we've been forgiven from all of our sins. That's right. You know? That's exactly right. So when we look at... Let's talk about for the last minute. Wow. <laughs> I was going to say how we treat others when we disagree. All right, quickly, throw some Bible passages out there that people can read um, All right, on well, their own. Matthew 5, 44 through 48, love your enemies, uh, bless those that curse you. We've referenced that a few times. Yeah. Uh, we got to be morally mature, perfect, right? Um, what about our, what about speech, Tucker? Um, oh, Colossians 4, 5 through 6, walk in wisdom, let your speech always be great, season with salt. That's kind of a summary real quick. Yeah, I mean... The Bible gives us the golden rule. Yeah, yeah. Matthew do, what seven twelve. Matthew seven twelve. I'll take. I don't know that one. I'll I'll take your. Um, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Mm -hmm. right? I think it's Luke six thirty one too. Okay, awesome. Um, honor everyone. That that passage in First Peter two seventeen about honor the king. It also says honor everyone. That's true. And Romans twelve seventeen and eighteen. Mm -hmm. Repay no one evil for evil. Yeah. Live peaceably with people. Turn the other cheek. So when somebody comes out and slanders you. Try to take a, take a deep breath and remember that proverb says a soft answer turns away wrath. You're supposed to be peacemakers. That's right. Matthew 5, 9. That's right. Everybody, thank you for tuning in today to talk about Jesus and politics, and we'll catch you back on the next episode of the Authentic Christian Podcast. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the show today. We'd like to mention you can download these episodes. They are sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network. We have an app available. You can check that out and get answers to life's biggest questions.